God's got a pretty good plan for you. Welcome to Jumpstart Your Faith, a 40-day devotional to help you get your faith muscles moving. My name is Matt Meyer with Seed Ministries International. So glad that you joined us again today. Today is day 14. That's two full weeks. That's pretty awesome. Thank you all for doing what you're doing by not just watching these videos, liking and sharing, which we appreciate that you do, but really taking to heart the Word of God that it starts by this point, you know, it's already starting to transform what's inside you. Uh, it's waking up those faith muscles. If you have some testimonies, you have some stories about that, if you put them in the bottom down there in the comments, uh, just let us know. Put them, put them down there. Tell us what's going on, what God's been doing in your life. It says in Proverbs that a testimony, a good word, makes the bones fat. Which are pretty cool, fat bones. Maybe we should start a testimony blog. But the testimony itself is what builds us up. When we hear what God has done for somebody else, we go, hey, God can do that for me too. It builds your faith. It's like a group faith. He's building it for the whole body. So I appreciate um, that you're growing and changing and developing your faith. If you really have experienced change, tell somebody about it. Not just us, not just put it in the comments here, but go out, uh, find somebody, tell them how God has changed your life. Lead them to the word of God and see what happens in their life. Ask to pray for them. God will give you the words to say. So we're going to get started today, day 14, with Psalm 37, 23. Bibles at the ready. And pre chose the page. Psalm 37, 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he, God, delights in his, that's the good man's, way. So to translate that to all people, the steps of a good person, God orders steps of a good person. And God delights in that person's way. God has a plan for you, and his plan is amazing. Let's look at Jeremiah 29, 11. For the second or third time, we've already talked about that here. But this says, don't even need to look it up. But I know it's in there. Double check me. It says in the King James, I know the thoughts I think for you, I think of you, think about you. In a lot of other translations, it says, I know the plans that I have for you. They're plans for your good their plans for you specifically. It's not just overarching major goal plans. It's not just God has planned that you are going to be the president of the United States of America or you're going to be the first person to set foot on Mars. It's not just those kind of plans. Those are big, you know, big event kind of plans. It wasn't the plan for David wasn't just that David became king. It's the thing that he does every day. God's plan is overarching but it's also nuanced. God loves you. Fundamentally, God loves you and he wants to spend time with you. And in those times that you spend together, he's going to begin to show you his heart for you, some things that he has in store for you. And it says, um, come let us reason together, God. God is even saying, he's saying, come on in. Let's talk this over together. He's got great plans for you and you want to be involved in them, but he's, he, he is willing to have a conversation, a two-way conversation with you because you're his kid. That's what parents are supposed to do. Open up, talk, talk to their children. And that's what God does. He is a good, good father. Now, as you are led by the Holy Spirit, as you submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and remember, Holy, the Holy Spirit is one-third of God. It's God in three persons. It's the, that inward witness voice that we have. He's the comforter. He's, he's the one who brings us all truth. Jesus had to go back to the Father so that he could send the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit teaches us everything that Jesus taught us. As you are led by the Holy Spirit and as you submit to his healing, you will find that the Holy Spirit will urge you to go to certain places. He will urge you to not go to certain places. Let's look again, uh, Acts 16, 16. Take a minute, get there. Actually, just letting me find my place. Acts 16, 16 says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought our master's gain by soothsaying. So this is Paul talking here. Paul, uh, actually Luke wrote this, but Paul and Luke are um, traveling around and a, a few people with him. And Paul uh, encounters this damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. He ran into somebody who's demon possessed and that demon possessed little girl was being exploited by her enslavers to, uh, 
for money. It was for their gain. She would say things that were um, demonically inspired, that were supernatural in a demonic sort of way, inspired. Now, Paul, uh, you know, we're, when we're in there in 1616, in that verse, Paul doesn't, Paul doesn't do anything. It says this, uh, verse 17 says, The same, that girl, followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto them the way of salvation. So she's, you know, saying some good things, but she's saying it from a demonic point of view. And then Paul, being grieved, he turned to her, he turned to the spirit, not to the girl. He turned to the girl and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the spirit came out at the same hour. God wants you, like Paul, to be engaged in certain endeavors and uh, disengaged from others. Does that make sense? He wants you, he, he's, he has a plan for you. He has daily plans for you. And those daily plans are always for good. They're always a, being about kingdom business. We are sons and heirs of God, and we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. So we're in the kingdom of heaven. We're in the kingdom of Jesus. Jesus came and preached the kingdom. When Paul starts preaching, it sounds like he's preaching something new because he's preaching the church. He's He's got more um, information than Jesus was able to share because it was before Jesus went to the cross. But it says in Acts, at the beginning of Acts, when Paul starts preaching, he begins to preach the kingdom. So he's just continuing the message of Jesus. This, this, there is no disparity. I know some people have said, oh, well, you know, if I have to choose between Jesus and Paul, give me Jesus. You don't have to choose. It's all the word of God. It's all right there for you. And Paul is a servant of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is going to urge you the same way he urged Paul. He, he told Paul, like, he was able to go to some places and other places he was told not to go there. God wants to establish his kingdom throughout the entire world. And Jesus already accomplished what it takes to establish that kingdom, but he needs us, the members of the body of Christ, to go out and do things. So God is guiding you even today. If you stop and you listen and you have a conversation with him, um, not only does he have that plan for you, but he has that plan for the people around you. And it very well may be that he needs you to accomplish his will on their behalf. That's uh, Romans 10, 13. Let's look at that real quick. Romans 10, 13, 15 says, 13 through 15, says, uh, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But it's here. But then how shall they call on him? How, how can they ask God for help? if they don't believe in God? And how shall they believe in God if they've not heard of God? And how shall they hear of God unless a preacher comes? And how how do they hear preaching unless that preacher is sent? So it's written, how beautiful of their feet, beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. God may need you to accomplish his will, and he will on behalf of other people. He may need you to be that preacher to go speak words of encouragement or healing or to preach the gospel to them. Ultimately, it's to preach the gospel to them, but it's also words of comfort, words of healing. Jesus was sent to bind up the brokenhearted. That's part of it. So it's speaking that comfort. And he was here to heal the sick and raise the dead. And he's empowered us to do the same thing. These are not first century uh, original apostle only kind of things. There's healings uh, people need healing now in the world. People need raising from the dead now in the world. And everybody needs to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are a preacher. You are a minister of reconciliation. You are empowered by God to go forth and preach his word. And if you are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, which you're developing that by building up your faith, as you are more become more and more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you're going to know who to talk to and who to not talk to. Some people are not ready to, to hear the, the word of God. You don't get to choose that. And, and you can preach. You can always preach. You always be instant in season and out of season. But some people are not ready to grab hold of it, or some people may not listen to you to grab hold of it. He's going to need you in certain situations, and you're the only one who can do it. That's why you, that's why I, that's why we need to study the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved, a workman unto God, not needing to be ashamed. So it's not, we are, studying the Word of God doesn't get you into heaven. Study of the, studying the Word of God isn't required to make it through the pearly gates. But studying the Word of God is what is going to allow the Word of God to bubble up in you.
If you haven't ever learned a thing, how are you supposed to preach it? How are you supposed to teach it? If you didn't learn math, you can't do math. That's the way it is. So learn what's in the Word of God. And you need to study the Word of God. And Romans 8, 14 tells us we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at that one. Romans 8, another fantastic chapter. And the whole book of Romans, really. The whole Bible, really. Romans 8, 14 says... For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's the children of God. So if you were led by the Spirit of God, you are a child of God. And you are not without having that Spirit inside you, the Holy Spirit inside you. So today is a day that you can be a walking encounter for somebody who needs to hear the good news of the gospel of Christ. God needs you. God has a plan for you. And he delights in you. Say this after me. Say, God delights in me. On the count of three. One, two, three. God delights in me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Let's pray. God, you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of glory. And we love you, God. We love you, God. We love you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for leading us by your spirit. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit that we can be led and sensitive and able to minister the good news this minister the good news to the poor minister healing minister um, binding up the broken heart and we thank you god we thank you god you're worthy of praise and honor thank you for um, teaching us and leading us and guiding us even today even this week as we go out and accomplish your will on the face of the earth in the name of jesus we pray amen sometimes it's hard not to just start busting out praying in tongues but <laughs> You know, when you when you got the spirit inside you, sometimes it just overflows like that. I hope you all are uh, developing that uh, ability, that desire inside you. Even if you were someone who's prayed in tongues, you can't ever get, can't ever do it too long. Why? Because the the spirit of God uh, always when he's when you're praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost is praying through you. He's praying with you and through you, and you cannot go wrong. You can't pray incorrectly when you're praying the Word of God. <laughs> you, when you're praying from the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost himself isn't going to say something wrong. So just keep it up. Keep practicing. Keep uh, pressing in with tongues. If you haven't got there yet, don't don't give up. It's okay. It, take your time. There's no pressure. There's just goodness on the other side. So thanks again for joining us, for watching these videos, for liking and subscribing and sharing. Once again, down below, uh, we do have links to this uh, a book version of this teaching. I uh, really appreciate it. It helps us spread the gospel more. If you um, go to Amazon, check that out. We also have a free newsletter, a free uh, download of an ebook that's 10 transformational New Testament prayers that'll knock your socks off. It's, it's praying straight the Word of God, and it changes your life when you do it. And we have a great website, a lot of fun going on. We love you, we thank you, and we'll see you again soon.